go. Good morning and good afternoon and good evening, my friends. Thank you once again for joining us here in the John Lavinia Success Mastermind. I am your host today, Glenn Henderson. And while we're looking at each other's smiling faces, I'm going to sneak over here and have a look at our upcoming schedule and see what's going on. It's, it's kind of a, it, it may be a bit of a light uh, schedule the next few days, seeing as how we're um, celebrating Thanksgiving Day this week. As a matter of fact, tomorrow here in the US of A. Immediately following our conversation here, the hospitality suite will be open. Swing by and say hi, books for Britain with Mandy Anderson at 4 p.m. Eastern, and then Adrian and Ico, Life and Business Tools at 6 p.m. Eastern, and then myself again, 9 p.m. Eastern with Networking Magic. Looking forward to seeing you. So, oh, who have we got here? Ego, I'm looking all around at uh, Jane and Adrian, Jay and Stuart. Good evening, Lieutenant Colonel. Great to see you. Carl and Robin Cyril Khalid, uh, good afternoon, Khalid, how are you? Ali Kim Ivie, the eternal Ivie. Edine, Alice, well, let's get started. Daisy, how are you? Good to see you, thank you for coming. Koila wouldn't be the same without you. And Jody Sharon, enjoy the chick fil A, will you please? And he's here, ladies and gentlemen. The man, the myth, the legend, the machine, John Lavenia has joined us. Great to see you, John. Listen, I, I was just sharing with our family here just before we went live that I've been <clears throat> run off my feet, as our British friends would say, with schedule and this, that, and the other, and three different uh, Zoom calls and meetings. Got a couple of lunch meetings later on. Uh, this afternoon, stuff's happening. It's it's popping as it is for all of us. And I've always thought that, I've always believed that maybe one of the most important words in the business language, particularly in the language of home business and e-commerce and such things is momentum. You get started, and I know that our, our friends here who, some of our friends here who have some knowledge in, in areas of, of, of flying and space travel and such will know a bit of something about momentum. And then he, of us like John and, and Stuart and all of us who are building businesses, you've had a little taste of this perhaps. Once you, after a while of getting started and the first few steps in getting a business started are can be tough yeah and they can be challenging and 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 sort of mysterious because i don't yet quite know what i'm doing i may pretend i do but really deep down <laughs> there's that voice okay is this really going to work now now some of us for some of us that voice is a little quieter others of us that voice argues with us on a daily basis and i would can, and I would, I would submit that one of the most important arguments that each of us needs to win is the one inside our own head. So why did I say all of this? For years, I had struggled with this idea of, well, what is this momentum thing? Uh, and, and how do you get there? Well, how do you, this, this holy grail that the, that, the, that the home business leaders like to talk about, oh, you know, it's just like falling off a log now. And, uh, you know, people are just calling me up wanting to buy my product left and right. And the orders are coming in faster than I can keep up. And man, people wanting to enroll, wanting to business with me. My mom, my mom, my mom, it's fantastic. How do you get there? Work, 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 work is how you get there. And uh, as you can imagine, I have been, let us just say, busting my rear for the better part of this whole year. And thank goodness, I am beginning to see, just barely beginning to see what kind of looks a little bit like momentum starting to show up. And all of us will get there on one condition. 
Don't quit. Don't give up. Discouraged? Sure, go ahead. Be discouraged. Go ahead. Have doubts. Go ahead. Have second thoughts. Go ahead. Wonder is this if whether this is actually going to work. Allow yourself that thought. Just one thing to never allow yourself. Don't quit. Whatever it is you're doing, if it's legal and honest and ethical, don't quit. Because, you know, like Thomas Edison said, many of life's failures <clears throat> are those people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. So don't give up. And believe it or not, that's not actually my topic today. That was just, all of that was aside. <laughs> so don't quit. The momentum will show up. And by the way, when momentum shows up, what do you do? You work twice as hard and then see what happens. We'll get back to that on another call. Here's my topic today. Thanksgiving Day tomorrow in America, where we will gather in varying sizes, group sizes of people from a few to a great many to a crowd to give thanks for that which we have been given, our many blessings, uh, not the least of which we celebrate uh, in America, our freedom. And that's a, that's a conversation that I love to have and may have it again at some point in the future. The other thing that we typically give thanks for and express gratitude is for the things that we have through our own effort and dedication and hard work been able to accomplish during the course of a, any given year. And many of us, I know that there was a wonderfully moving and, and emotional session with Stuart, with uh, Adrian um, recently and, and where he talked about, asked us to express what we're grateful for. I understand it was uh, kind of got quite emotional there, which is wonderful. I have been thinking about, and this is the thought that's been rattling around in my head. I have been thinking for some bit of time now about this question. Well, yes, what am I grateful for now? I can list things as, as many of us can. Here's the big question for me and for those of us who are engaged in an enterprise that's designed to bring increase into our own lives, designed to make us better people and designed to bring increase and improvement into the lives of people we meet and enhance other people's lives by whatever means we choose. Here's the question. What do I intend to be grateful for this time next year? Uh, that opens up all kinds of possibilities, doesn't it? What, not what am I grateful for, although that list is long for every one of us because I'll tell you right now, whatever it is you think you're struggling with, <laughs> I complained because I had no shoes till I met a man who had no feet. Old corny old saying sounds hackneyed and cliched, but think about that for a second. Oh, my old BS car is so beat up and I, uh, you have a car. Oh, you know, this little apartment here, and uh, I really, man, if only I could get into, you have a roof over your head. Have, 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 have I made that point without stepping on too many toes? <laughs> We're grateful for what we have. And here is what I believe, possibly as much as or more than anything else will launch us forward into a mag each of our own magnificent future. What do I intend to be grateful for next year? This does a couple of things. Number one, it, 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 it opens us up mentally and emotionally to possibility. What's possible for you in your business, in your life, in your health? <clears throat> I know that for example, this time next year, I intend to be enormously grateful 
for the miracle of having lost 60 pounds and gotten myself back into shape and being just as fit and just as healthy and just as full of life at the age of <clears throat> 60 as I was at the age of 40. That's one thing I intend to be grateful for next year, this time next year. In your relationships, what do you intend to be grateful for in terms of what you've been able to do and accomplish and enjoy with your significant other, significant others and those closest to you? How do you wanna deepen those relationships? What do you intend to be grateful for? Ah, I'll put it this way. What number in your bank account do you intend to be grateful for next year? Go on and on, make your own list. And I would encourage us sometime between now and the 31st of December to really sit down in, uh, in a quiet place with a beverage of your choice and, and no interruptions and make a list of items of future gratitude. One of the things, as we said, is that this opens your mind up to possibilities. The other thing, in my opinion, that talking about our future gratitude list does is it completely prevents us from staying complacent, from getting complacent, from getting stuck where we are. Because, oh my gosh, the future is so bright. Yeah, Got to wear shades. <laughs> That's so nice. The future's so bright. Force yourself to live in your future, in a sense. Do it a little, you can do it a little at a time. It's, you know, th there are people who are stuck in their own past. Think about someone you know who is stuck in their own past. Has that person really accomplished anything of significance recently? Get stuck in your future. Live in your present. Work today. Do your work today. But live in your future. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and tell this story now. Um, Many of you know that, um, or at least some of you may know that I spent about 10 years living in the Middle East. And it was a wonderful experience. I will say that very interesting. Got to meet my first week there in, in the country where I was living. First week, I met people from 20 different countries. Fantastic. Had all kinds of interactions with people from places I've never met before, socialized, with men and women from all over the place learned one of the universal truths of human experience, which is that as a general rule, people don't go to war, governments do. But that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> um, and had wonderful, many, many, many tremendous opportunities to do music the way I really wanted to do it. I was shocked at how many gigs were available to a singer living in a Muslim police state. Holy smokes, it was fantastic. And I had an experience living there that was life-changing for me in terms of how it altered my view of the world and my view of my future. There was a stretch of probably, out of those 10 years, there was a stretch probably three and a half years when I was quite literally a man without a country. Through a whole series of, you know, personal and legal stuff going on that uh, it's, it's, is not really germane to the story. My passport, my passport expired. And so if, if you know anything about living abroad and living in, in different countries, particularly in the Middle East, you know, that in order to stay and live in the country, you got to have a work visa. 
as a as a foreigner, as a, as a as an expat, you've got to have a work visa, valid work visa, and in order to have a valid work visa, you got to have a valid passport. And I didn't, so when my first work contract ended, I was without a job. I was without a work visa and I was without a passport. So what did this mean? Couldn't stay in the country because I didn't have a didn't have a job, didn't have a work visa. Couldn't leave because my passport wasn't valid. And et cetera, et cetera. So had nowhere to go, no recourse, no home. Because, you know, the apartment I was living in was supplied by, had been supplied by my previous employer. And so I spent a, a good deal of that time quite literally homeless. What the hell do you do? Um, I'll tell you what I did. Uh, what, well, first, my, my a, a roof was provided by the kindness of strangers, friends, actually. Wonderful friends that I discovered I had when the times got to their toughest, to their lowest. People who put me up in situations that, again, would take way too much time for me to describe here. Uh, lived in, you, you ever read those, see those stories on the news about those labor camps in, in some of these Middle Eastern countries where deplorable conditions. Yeah, lived in one of those too. How in the world did I get through that? Well, again, on the physical side, friends I didn't even know I had stepped up and helped and provided for me and gave to me in ways that I will never be able to repay. Well, that was the outside, the outward, the physical. Uh, what about this? What about this? I maintained two things. Every morning, every morning, when I woke up, I swung my feet over the side of the bed, swung my legs over the side of the bed, my feet hit the floor, and I got up and I started moving. And then for the rest of that day, I kept moving. And I just kept moving and kept moving for three and a half years. Finally got the whole passport and the work and everything worked, worked out, got it all straightened out and was back to work and fantastic. Here was the other thing that I did. I spent almost all of that time looking forward mentally and emotionally to the day when I would be able to look back and say, oh, thank God I was able to get through this. Thank God I survived. Thank God I didn't just quit and give up on my life. Thought about it, but I didn't. And now I'm here today and the situation's resolved and I'm back in business and now I'm back really moving forward. I'm so grateful that I had friends around me to help. I'm so grateful that I didn't quit. So grateful that I believed that by, by God's grace, I was able to believe in myself enough to get up every morning and keep moving. I had those feelings. I started to allow myself to experience those feelings of gratitude probably in year two of the three and a half. First year was rough. But after that, it was only looking forward. I wouldn't allow myself, I couldn't allow myself to get stuck in my past, to get stuck in my circumstances. Had to look forward or else I don't even want to think about what might've happened. So what got me through that mentally, emotionally, was my future gratitude list. What I intended to be grateful for 
whenever it finally happened. And since then, my um, friends, many of my friends who knew me then continue to be amazed at the fact that I made it. My best man, uh, the best man at my wedding to Paula, um, told me, responded when I told her the story. Do you see what I did there? my best man, when I told her the story, she said, Glenn, you're gonna be able to live on this. You're gonna be able to dine out on this for the rest of your life. I said, what do you mean? She says, you're a survivor. And don't let anybody tell you that you're not. She said, you overcame this, you got through this, you can overcome anything. And again, I'm going to come back to it. The one thing that got my, that kept my mind straight, the one thing that got me through it was the future gratitude list. So please, my most sincere suggestion to you, to all of us, Get started on it now. You know, you've got plenty of time between now and New Year's Eve, but you know how funny, it's funny how time just kind of blasts right by during the holidays, right? So get started with it now. Sit down with a, a blank notebook. Make it a blank notebook. Not like the last few pages of the 2020 notebook. Start a new one. Start a new 2021 journal. What do I intend to be grateful for by Thanksgiving 2021, by New Year's Eve 2021? What do I intend to be grateful for? Start making up your, start working up your future gratitude list. And the reason why I, I, I encourage us to do this, so strongly encourage us to do this is because, take it from me, it might just save your life. Okay, that's me done talking. Put your hand up and share what you think. Lieutenant Colonel Mark Riggle, you're up first, sir. Please go forward. Thanks, Glenn. I won't uh, take a long time uh, this morning, but I just wanted to cover a couple of things. Thank first of all, um, it's great to be back. I was traveling to Washington State and um, picking up my son, Josh, and his uh and his daughter, my granddaughter, and bringing her back. So yesterday I missed uh, missed the call. First time I've ever missed a call, and I was kind of bummed about that, but I was right in the middle of driving through Portland. We're glad and to see you back, brother. Yeah. So uh, there's a couple of things, Glenn. This is, again, these topics, every time I get on these calls, there's always something just uh, really blazing in my mind about what's going on. What do I intend to be grateful for next year? What I really want to see and I want to have happen for me next year is I want to do an offsite with as many people in this group as possible. I want us to go and meet somewhere. I don't care if it's the East Coast and it's something central that makes it work for the people, you know, across the pond and here or whatever we do. You know, it'd be great if we could do the thing with Stuart and, you know, and the, and the Llama Trek, but, you know, he's got uh, he's got to get through his issues with his back and, and I'd love to be able to do that. Maybe I can do something and, and help him out. In the future, maybe we can work through that. And that would be a long trek for some and uh, a rather minimal trek for others in some regards. So I'm trying to look at something that would uh, maybe work all around. But I really want to meet this family um, someplace face to face. And the reason I bring this up is because when I went up to Washington, I had a chance to meet a couple of people on the way up to Washington. I met Jamie Young for the first time. And I'm telling you, man, you think Jamie looks good on, on the camera. That guy, I, now I understand why he was a tight end for the NFL. I mean, this guy is 6'4". He's a pretty imposing figure, you know, when you get up. Uh, yeah, he's a big boy. But he's such a, he, you know, he, he's so mild-mannered. But typically guys like that are, are like that. 
and it was great to talk to them, you know, have a, have a Starbucks and hang outside and, and just kind of catch up and meet each other and talk for a few minutes. So I've made that connection. The second person I met was Sandy, Sandy Lewis up in Yelm. I went to her place and I met her kids and her kids, and I'll, I'll name them off here, uh, Casper and Honey are her two dogs, Grace Kelly, Lavender Girl and Willow, which are the twin goats, and Bluebell. They're all, all goats. And then, uh, of course, uh, then there's Pork Shop. Sadie, Penelope, Big Bird, and Cleo. These are the chickens, okay? And when I look at this list, I go, man, this could have been this could have been the call signs of the old F-18 squadron guys that I knew back in the day when I was in a squadron. You know, it was just, I was rolling. It was just so funny with all these call signs. It was a good time. And I had, and that's why I'm bringing this up now, Glenn, because to have the, we've been doing this for months and months and months, to have the first, you know, the personal face-to-face and meet people uh, for real was such, that was so important to me. Um, and, it, and it just solidified what I felt like I already knew in this venue, but it will bake it so much more. I, I just can't say enough that if we get together like this, that nobody's going to ever break us apart. Never. Once we meet, once we know each other, once we do something together, we are going to be like uh, any team anywhere on the globe. I can feel it in my bones. I saw it happen over this weekend. And uh, I'm just, um, I'm really grateful for this, for this family. I really am. I can't say enough, man. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Mark your calendars, 11 and a half weeks from next Tuesday at noon, our place. <laughs> Wait, you think I'm kidding? <laughs> you are absolutely right, Mark. Um, Zoom is wonderful. And, you know, like I like to say, technology is a wonderful thing when it works. And technology has really allowed us to come together in ways that we probably wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. And yes, I'm looking forward to hugging some of y'all and high fiving the rest of you and pouring a little bourbon and, uh, oh, sorry, uh, that'd be a Coca Cola for John. Um, <laughs> and really getting to spend time together and visit and get to know each other face to face. As we say in the home business industry, belly to belly, heart to heart. It's coming. It's going to happen. Let's add, let's all of us add that one to our future gratitude list, huh? What do you think? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Llama King. Start, what's happening? Hey, good to see everybody. Um, Mark, thanks for that share. Um, and of course, Glenn, thanks for your story. I know that uh, you had shared uh, some of that with me uh, previously. And uh, the more I the more I hear about your time over there, the more props I give to you for uh, keeping your head in the game and uh, thinking about the thinking from the end. Let's say about uh, getting back home and whatever you had to do. Um, I was going to make a joke about uh, I thought you know it was pretty easy to get uh, you know U.S. passport over there. I'm not sure why, <laughs> why you didn't. Um, anyway, a couple things, Mark, to, to hit what you were saying, you know, uh, technology as wonderful as uh, Zoom and all these things and email and everything else uh, that we use to communicate with each other. I think we all know that nothing, that that is, is never a replacement um, or, or a, a real substitute for real human connection face-to-face, uh, person-to-person interaction, right? Um, Glenn, I loved what you were saying about um, assuming a future state, right? Uh, and to me, this is, this is kind of low-tech time travel, right? And this is how we're able to assume a future version of ourself. Um, I, I really, really liked what you're talking about in terms of, um, uh, and, you know, what are we going to be grateful for next year? Right. And I would sort of piggyback on that or take it even a step further and say, well, let's imagine that we are that have that now and let's start feeling grateful for these things now and set the stage right um, on a personal level. Um, what I what I will be grateful for next year is is to uh, have the ability to climb mountains again uh, and be out in nature. Right. And so um, that's really the one thing top of my top of my list. So I'll stick with that. I'll go to bed every night 
feeling um, grateful and uh, and uh, proud and amazing um, and feeling myself standing on top of that peak um, and feeling the wind through my hair and on my face and the cold mountain breeze and um, and hearing the the call of the hawk or the eagle right so all these details I'm going to put into this visualization and thanks for that man thanks for that reminder cheers God bless you uh, thank you Stuart yeah you haven't been thinking about this at all have you no detail in your mind as you it's just a fuzzy little sort of, a, <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, yeah, the, the, it, it becomes easier and more pleasing to us to imagine that future, to assume the emotion of the wish fulfilled when we attach emotion to it and feeling and detail and the call of the hawk and the feel of the cool breeze, the cool breeze on your face and so on. I love that. Love that, Stuart. And yeah, it, I can't even imagine how tough it must be for, you know, a guy like you who's make, making your whole life now in the out of doors and not being able to enjoy it as much as you'd like. But the day is coming. Ah, correction. The day is here. Just waiting for the calendar to catch up. <laughs> Kim and then Nikki, let's keep it moving. How are you, Kim? Hi, Glenn. Thank you so much for this topic. Hi, everyone. Um, never thought about future gratitude. So uh, I do want to get to that. But before I get to that, I want to speak to something that I said yesterday. Yesterday, I basically said I am not very good at expressing my thoughts like everyone on here. And what rose up in me today and was kind of confirmed in my call, not kind of, but was confirmed in my call with Kathy, was the fact that I am who I am. And so I don't want to apologize anymore um, for saying that I am not eloquent in my speech because I am who I am. You know, I, I might not be able to string my words together. I might not be able to speak in uh, poetic sentences or whatever they are, you know, in, in, proper grammatical structure, but I still am who I am and I can express what I think and I feel and I believe. And so I don't want to apologize for that anymore. So I just want to put that out there. Um, and now I want to speak to future gratitude because I really have never thought about that. And uh, so what, what do I want to be grateful for in my future? I want to be grateful for better health. I want to have a better year health-wise next year. I want to be thankful for prosperity in my e-commerce business, definitely in all of our e-commerce business and whatever businesses we might be endeavoring. And, uh, and then, um, and I want to be thankful and grateful for physical interaction with others. Um, I know many of you may know the five love languages. And so one of my love languages is my top is quality time, but the other one is physical touch. And so that for me has just been a challenge because I can't, I can't hug my daughter. I can't hug my mom. You know, I can't go see my grandchildren and hug them. So I want to be so grateful and thankful for in the ensuing months that I will be able to physically hug people again. And, um, Stuart, um, what did you say? I, I wrote it down and now I forgot, doggone it. Um, I don't know, but it went to whatever you said. And so I guess it made me go into this mode was think, thank, and prosper. So there you go. I'll leave you with that. Think, thank, and prosper. Okay. Nice. That's what I got. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Who, 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 who was telling you that BS about how you not not supposed to be eloquent, Kim. What in the world are you talking about? Yeah, my my <laughs> mindset, you know. So remember one of the first things that we that that we talked about earlier in this conversation today. The most important argument each of us needs to win is the one inside our own head. Sounds to me like you're winning. Nice. Yeah, and th that that's a fabulous list. It, it, how cool would it be for each of us? to be able to be grateful for better health, for more vitality next year. Heck yeah, among other wonderful things that you mentioned. Thank you, 
Kim, I appreciate hey, and it. And one more thing, and I'm thankful for the meetup that we're going to have next year that someone's coordinating and we're going to get there and we're going to be you, there. Told you, <laughs> so 11 and a half months. That. Told you, 11 and a half months from next Tuesday at our place at noon. Don't be late. <laughs> Nikki and then Adrian J. What do you say, Nikki? How are you, ma'am? I'm great ish. Thank you, Glenn. I'm um, interesting. The last two have both been about health because that's mine too. Um, and I know that I've mentioned occasion, I don't know who's heard it, but I, I suffer from depression. I've had it for the last 10 years. It's, um, it's severe um, and it's called treatment resistant, which means that nothing has worked. I'm now on a medication from the 1950s because it's the only one that gets near it. Um, but they don't normally prescribe it because of the side effects. And, and, but it's also called high performing, as in um, I can put on a show and nobody knows. Um, you know, so I bring to the camera not the person that I was 10 minutes before the call started. Um, but then I was, because I was also writing down about the gratitude things and some things that depression has killed in me, my motivation, my momentum, my joy, my friendships, all things that I've completely lost in that time. And, and actually those are all the things I get from this group because um, you, I'm accountable in that if I'm not here for a call, somebody will say, hey, where were you? And if, um, if I, um, I'm feeling, you know, that I've got no motivation. I get encouragement from somebody else. So what I've written here, uh, I can't get the glasses. I can't see what. Um, so, so basically, this group gives me a lot of the things that my depression robs me of, and that might sound a bit like um, codependency, you know, when you're leaning on somebody else. But when you can't find your motivation, your um, will to live from inside, from your own skeleton, to support you. A strong group around you is just what you do need to provide that while you build up the strength and, and make yourself better by those inner healing thoughts, Glenn, that you mentioned. And so while I'm sorting out my brain on the inside so I can support myself, I've, I've actually not been this good. This six months of being in this group has been be the best I've been. The last time in 10 years that I was this good, I was going through chemo because my chemo team was so good that they were holding me up. And, um, and so it's... Um, it's it's a remarkable thing, but I um, I will definitely be well enough for our trip next year, <laughs> and I hope that by the end of twenty twenty one, I can don't have to say that I'm a high you know treatment resistant high performing depressive, and I hope that I am off the drugs which are playing havoc with my body, and um, so that I can actually just get on with the rest of my life because it's robbed me of a decade, and I hate to look at it that way, but that is what it's done. And thank you so much, all of you, for your support and your um, encouragement all the time. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. If I may, uh, if I may uh, wax a bit religious, a bit spiritual for a moment, in the name of God, I reclaim your oh. health for you. Thank you. Um, it's interesting. You you were talking about, uh, and and I'm. One thing struck me. You said um, codependency. You used the word codependency, mm. and and the benefit that you've received in the, over the past months. Mm. And I will share with you and say unto all of us, codependency, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers, my sisters, my family. Behold, look at Nikki, and behold the power of the mastermind. Yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> Adrian J, how are you doing, my man? What's going on, mate? I'm okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. I've missed the last couple of days. I've been busy with work. Uh. Oh, Glenn, your topic today is brilliant. It's down right down my street. Yes, mm -hmm. the biggest thing about uh, in the 12 month is making goals. And I'm, I'll make this quick. My main goal next year is to be a married man for the first time. It got it got postponed last this year because of COVID. So I've rearranged it for next year. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to meeting up with you guys later on next year. I would love to meet you in person. Um, and, and the main thing, I've got uh, to do well in me eco business because I've got um, an e I've got an e Bay shop now, and we've got an Amazon shop, and they are doing fantastic, better than I ever thought. Um, all right, yeah, it takes a lot more time up because I need to do it after work, but at the end of the day, 
You don't get anywhere unless you do hard work. Once you've got past the hard work, life, you enjoy life to the full. And I just want to say that to everybody. And, and Nikki, you are brilliant. You are fantastic. And you will get through this. Everybody who suffers from our list will get through it with this group. And it's just fantastic. And the company is unbelievable. And I love being in this group. And I miss it when I'm not. And that's it. Brilliant. Bloody brilliant, Adrian. The man knows where he's going. Don't you love it? And by the way, enjoy the uh, enjoy your newly married life. I can tell you it's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. We've got Jane and Mark 2.0. Jane, good afternoon. How are you, ma'am? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for a brilliant topic. Thanksgiving. And um, actually, I wanted to speak to Nikki. And I wanted her to know that from my childhood up until I think about eight years ago, I suffered from depression. My mother did suffer from depression all her life. And I was living with her. And I didn't know any different until I, I've always, I've, I think for about 20 years, I've been a Christian, but then I put this challenge to God. I didn't even know it was depression. I just knew that I was always sad. I was always, you know, something just envelopes me sometimes and I just feel sad and down. And then I might be in the midst of people like this and my mind is just wandered into somewhere. And but eight years ago, I got delivered from depression and I have to share this with you. And what happened was when that spirit was going to envelope me again, I presented the name of Jesus. And I started to thank God, this Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving does work. I started to thank God and no, I will not suffer from depression. No, 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 in the name of Jesus. And that spirit left. And then when he wanted to come again, I started thanking God and I started presenting the name of Jesus and he left and it never came back again. I have to tell you that that's how I got delivered and thank you for the topic today. And that's all I'm going to share. Thank you, Jane. Um, I have these little cards. Uh, by the way, today is Wealth Wednesday. Quick challenge for all of us. Sometime today, perform a random act of kindness for a complete stranger involving a financial exchange, preferably someone who cannot possibly repay you. You'll figure it out. Yeah, I've got these little cards with a saying. I'm not sure you'd be able to see it. They're the cutest little thing. By Zig Ziglar. Can you see that? Gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions by Zig Ziglar. What I kept hearing from you, Jane, was thank you, thank you, gratitude, thank you to God, thank you to, and prayer, it, you know, it's interesting, I was thinking about this too. I, I don't know where it was, I don't recall where it was that, that I was sharing this with somebody. If you, you know, if you want to think about prayer, if you want to think about having a conversation with the divine, with, with higher intelligence, with uh, the universe, with uh, uh, cosmic consciousness, with God, whatever term one chooses to use, prayer doesn't change God. Prayer changes us because it aligns us. It brings us into greater alignment with the good, brings us into greater alignment with the divine. So thank you, Jane. Love it. Love it. Mark, what else you got to say, my man? <laughs> yeah, I thought I was done, but uh, just I kind of <laughs> wanted to follow on with um, one comment regarding um, Sandy. You know, when I went to her place, I really felt, because it's been kind of mentioned here, I really felt comfortable. I felt like it was a very positive place. And you know, here's this new stranger who comes into this, you know, this, this property and you got all these animals and the animals were very welcoming. There was 
Hmm. Didn't seem like there was any, you know, intimidation or any worry. And, and it's just, um, I just felt really super comfortable. I was hmm. almost like I was in a, you know, a different life. Um, and I was enjoying all of it. Just, I had just a, a, a wonderful time. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody um, saw that I acknowledged that to Sandy for being such a good host and welcoming me onto the property and her animals were just fantastic i had such a good time i i could have stayed there for days i just absolutely mm -hmm. loved that environment that was so cool so i am Stuart. i'm telling you man i'm looking forward to uh combing your llamas and doing the whole thing dude so <laughs> i'm ready man I, I love that stuff i do i just it's so good to be back in that environment uh, it was so warming for me it was really therapeutic in so many ways so thanks cool mark you know it's a funny thing about animals Animals know a good person when they see one. So what's this say about our man, Mr. Riggle? Yes, sir. Kim is back. Hi. What's up, Kim? Well, um, since you said something about animals, I just have to tell you, you know, my little guy here, he's really never this gentle and loving. He's really not. He's such a very aloof cat, but he's super, super hungry. It's almost... He knows he gets fed at 12 o'clock. And so 15, about 15, 20 minutes before that time, he's, you know, huddling around trying to get some food. So that's really why he's being nice. But anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I just wanted to say real quick to Jane, thank you for sharing that, Jane, you know, sharing your story about depression. And I just want to corroborate what you are saying. You know, uh, scripture says that we should call those things. And I know you know this, that be not as though they were, you know? And so we talk about this mastermind and what we speak and we're speaking into existence, you know? And so you, you're, you spoke that into existence, you know, and you called on the name of Jesus and you spoke that into existence. So I just want to corroborate that and just share briefly uh, in my, I, I guess I want to just share that, that for me and my experience with depression, uh, what happened for me was every year um, around October-ish, I would feel super depressed and I, I couldn't understand it. And so finally, I just kind of went into prayer and said, God, what is happening? Like, why am I always depressed at this time? And, at, and so what I did, I just felt like he led me to go into my, at that time um, in my house in Ohio, I had a, a, an attic or like a, a cubby hole in my bedroom. So I went in there and started going through boxes and I found in one of my boxes, I had a, a, in my photo album from high school, I was in a car accident when I was 14 and I almost died. I ruptured my spleen and I had to have exploratory surgery <clears throat> and um, they had to remove my spleen. And I had pictures of that car and what the car looked like. And it was mangled. And I just felt like God was saying, get rid of these. Get, this is, it's gone. This is over. You know, and when I looked, my accident was in October. I don't remember the exact date anymore because I'm free of that stuff now. But I mean, isn't that amazing how like every October I would be super depressed and then all of a sudden he like shows me this and I, I got rid of those pictures and I've never been depressed in October again, ever. That <laughs> so is praise God. <laughs> That's interesting. That's yeah. really interesting. We yeah. never really forget anything, do we? Yeah, we think yeah. that we do. It's that subconscious thing, right? <laughs> that somebody and, was talking and, about and recently. <laughs> what you needed, clearly, what you needed was that trigger. Yeah. To be, be 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 made aware of that trigger and then release it. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, fabulous. good. Fabulous. That's good. Well, that's good, man. That's good preaching, Kim. Come on. <laughs> that's good stuff well, well we are coming down the home stretch here and uh, uh there are there are no more hands raised at the moment so listen it's perfectly okay with me if it's okay with y'all i got a turkey that i need to get started attending to and and all of that um i am grateful for this group for this family how we support each other and challenge each other and inspire each other is something that most people in the world, you hear me? Most people in the world don't get to have this. And we do. 
because we've chosen to be together and we've chosen to believe in each other. So grateful for this group. Hey, it's Therese. How are you? Hello. I guess I couldn't let it go without <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> yes. uh, comments and saying hi to everyone uh, out loud. So um, on the eve of Thanksgiving, you know, I, uh, I, we, I mean, we're thankful every day, right? We're sharing great uh, gratitude every day. And it's interesting that we have this special, one special day where we celebrate that. So I guess I was just thinking about that last night and how it, how it evolved and how, you know, what the true, what the true uh, occurrence was and how it evolved and, and then, and the tradition behind it with my own family. And, um, you know, I, I feel like probably many of you, as well as myself, are, are practicing gratitude and thankfulness every day. Um, but this one day, everyone kind of gathers together and um, I'm looking forward to it. My niece and nephew um, just arrived two days ago. Everyone tested COVID free. So we do get to be um, five of us in one household um, for the day. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I just wanna say, you know, thank you. It's a, it can be a difficult time um, for a lot of folks. And I know for myself, uh, there's a lot of um, old stuff that creeps up and creeps in. It's been a little bit of a tough week, um, but I wanted to say thank you to everyone because just having you here, knowing you're here in the morning and knowing I can reach out to so many of you um, to move me through any stuck spots um, means so much to me. So thank you. I have great gratitude. And I also want to just offer that out if anyone has any moments tomorrow or in the next day, um, you have my email, you have my number, you can Skype me, you can message me. Um, I'm here. So thank you, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Therese. You just gave me an idea. Um, I'm going to wrap up in just a moment, but I've just dropped my mobile number in the chat. And uh, so anybody reach out, text, call, say hello tomorrow. Be glad to hear from you. Um, unless there is, as I always say, unless there is a thought burning a hole in the pocket of someone's mind. We're going to wrap up uh, with a, a bit of housekeeping. Um, the uh, uh, hospitality suite is open. Swing by and say hi. Let me take another quick look here at the calendar and just uh, remind myself. Uh, hospitality suite right after this. Books for Britain with Mandy at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Life and Business Tools with Adrian and Ego at six, and I'll be back with you. I'll be back with us at nine Eastern for networking magic. Oh, here's a final thought from Mandy Anderson. How are you, Mandy? Hi, Glenn, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for that, it was brilliant. Um, I just wanted to say that we've been having a vote on the Times for Books for Britain, um, and seven to 8 p.m. in the UK is the one that's coming out at the top. So we're going to we're going to do it at seven to eight p.m. So All right, seven to eight p.m. London time. Yeah. London All righty time. then. I shall <laughs> not even bother to try the conversion. I think it's uh, two two p.m. where we are in uh, Houston here, Central Standard Time. So convert yeah. for your time zone, and we'll see you at we'll see you then. And, seven and London. Happy, yeah. And happy Thanksgiving for tomorrow, everybody. Thank happy you. Love. Thank you. May I ask a favor of all of us? Just one last thing before we, as, as we wrap up, would, would you, as a favor to me, drop some love, drop a bunch of love in the chat right now for our, our coach, our Commodore, our Admiral, our friend, our leader, my friend, John Lavinia. I'm thinking of gratitude and I'm thinking of a saying that I heard one time. And I really will wrap, we really will wrap up with this. Thank you, John. A good leader's people say, what a great leader. A great leader's people say, we did it. Thank you for all of this, John. My friends, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Enjoy your feast with your family and all of our friends, loved ones. Keep them close. Give them a hug. Tell them you love them.
Mm -hmm. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Bye. We'll see you all very, very soon. Happy Thanksgiving.